Accusations of sexual harassment coming back to haunt former Governor Andrew Cuomo, the lawsuit filed by a former aide. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Macy Eglin. We'll have more on the former governor in a moment. But first, Hamas has released 24 hostages as a negotiated four-day ceasefire takes hold in Gaza. 13 of them are Israelis. Here's video of an Israeli airbase where some of those hostages were expected to be taken and evaluated. You can see ambulances there standing by. The hostage release comes as Israel temporarily halts its attacks on Hamas forces in Gaza. Now, as the hostages were being freed, a convoy of trucks carrying humanitarian aid started flowing across the border from Egypt. The deal calls for Hamas to release a total of 50 hostages and Israel to release 150 Palestinian prisoners. We asked Long Islanders what they think about the ceasefire. And I hope it, it leads to a peaceful resolution, and that's what we need. It's a start. It's a start, and hopefully it'll continue. Read more about the ceasefire and the latest developments in Israel. Click the Get More banner below the Newsday TV video box. Former Governor Andrew Cuomo has just been hit with a lawsuit alleging sexual harassment. Cuomo's former aide, Brittany Camiso, claims her old boss forcibly touched her breast and created a hostile work environment. She claims the former governor also routinely made sexual comments to her before he demoted her. Cuomo's attorney says the claims are false and calls the lawsuit a, quote, cash grab. Sean Diddy Combs has been hit with two more sexual assault lawsuits. Suits. The new allegations accuse Combs of sex assault, beatings, and forced drugging in the early 1990s. A spokesperson for Combs denies the accusations. Last week, his former girlfriend, singer Cassie Ventura, accused him of rape and abuse. He reached an out-of-court settlement with her the next day. More than two weeks after Election Day, there is an official winner in the race for Shelter Island Town Supervisor. Now that absentee ballots have been counted, Republican Town Councilwoman Amber Brock Williams has been declared the winner. She ran against Democrat Gordon Gooding. Only in Newsday, tax filings show just how much the top Long Island College presidents are making. Presidents at LIU, Adelphi, and NYIT earned more than a million dollars apiece in 2021. Compensation for many other leaders at four-year schools ranges from $300,000 to $700,000 a year. Well, some people stood in line before sunrise, hoping to cash in on Black Friday deals. So what was it like braving the malls today? We sent Sherry Einhorn to find out. I was the first person in the parking lot here at 3.30 in the morning. They do say the early bird gets the worm. And on this Black Friday, there were lots of early birds outside of the Westbury Walmart before sunrise. I thought they opened at five, but apparently it was six, but it's been, a, it's been a fun wait and I'm excited to get a PS5. Here at Walt Whitman Shops, we saw signs for 30, 50, even 60% off, enticing shoppers to step inside the stores. I usually do Cyber Mondays is much better than uh, Black Fridays because I thought it was gonna be a lot of people, so I just took a gamble. Seven to 11 is the best sales, like 50% off, so that's the only time I'm gonna go. What we're seeing this year is an anticipation of people being excited to come out and shop with their families. They want to see, touch, and feel what they're purchasing. Some shoppers had other goals in mind. To try and get it all done. In one day? Yes. Do you normally? They, yeah, well, because this way they can pick it out for themselves. And over here at Best Buy, we bumped into shoppers out in full force looking for steals and deals. To specifically see a particular item we wanted to see in person, then just buy it online, have it come out, then return it with all the pain in the neck that is. Judging by the crowds at Roosevelt Field Mall, there were lots of people who also decided on shopping in person today. I'm Sherry Einhorn for Newsday TV. Looks like they were packed. You can read more about Black Friday shopping on Long Island. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. In high school sports, they're celebrating tonight in Massapequa.
that is Massapequa quarterback Joey DSO connecting with Dean Vitale for a touchdown that made it 35 to nothing over William Floyd in the Long Island's Class One championship game. They went on to win it 35 to seven. After the victory, the squad posed with their hard-earned championship trophy. Congratulations to them. You can read more about the Class 1 championship game and the Class 3 championship game between Southside and East Islip. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Let's take a look at your Long Island forecast now. Tonight, colds below freezing, about 27 degrees. For your Saturday, partly cloudy in the upper 30s. We'll take a look at your seven-day forecast for you in just a few minutes. Long Island weather is brought to you by Home Tax Saver, PTRC Incorporated. Lots of Long Islanders went out and waited in line for those Black Friday deals today. Newsday TV's Elisa DiStefano and Beth Whitehouse show us some of the hottest toy ideas this holiday season for the kids in your life. The biggest in both size and demand? The Barbie Dream House 2023. And what makes this the dream gift? This Dream House has a crazy amount of activities for your Barbie. She can slide down the slide right into her Ooh, own pool. Go ahead, and Barbie. even her dog has its own swimming pool. There's also an elevator so that Barbie doesn't have to walk down all those stairs in her high heels. Very important. And this and this Dream House looks like the house in the movie, yes, which does. was so popular this year. These remind me of Rock the Rock and Robots. Yes, right? but these are a little different, put your right? Head back on. Yeah. <laughs> these are different because the kids actually build them themselves first and they learn about hydraulics while they wow. do it. So. so it's a great STEM toy. Right? And then you have to try to, I got you, oh. knock your head off. I was never very good <laughs> at this game. <laughs> Okay, this reminds me a little bit of the Easy Bake Oven of my day. Yes, but we're not actually making cookies. Okay. You're baking a stuffed animal, baking one. So how does that work? You take the dough and you put it into this mold. You open your oven and you put your mold in. You okay. close the oven, you set the timer, and when it's ready, you've baked a stuffed animal. It's so cute. Oh, and it makes noise. <laughs> and you can do it again and again. This gift brings me back to, it seems like, a they have a lot to say, the Furby. Yes, the Furby was out in 1998 and it was the toy of the year. I remember. It's back for the 25th anniversary and now we also have ah. Furblets for the first time. Little ones that you can hold on a keychain. And they have a lot to say too. Yep. And we have a lot more gifts in our gift guide. You can see them all here and read more about them. Newsday.com slash gift guide. How do we turn these things? I don't know. <laughs> Parents everywhere are going to love these. Information about communities is lost if you don't have local reporters. And if there's no one reporting, how do you know what's going on in your community? Newsday, covering Long Island like no one else can. Only in Newsday, a local group is trying to bring more diversity to the outdoors. Here's how hunters of color are breaking barriers. So this is my first deer hunt. I'm very excited uh, and nervous at the same time. My, my uncle was one of the first like black game wardens in Mississippi. And like my grandfather was a farmer who also deer hunted for sustenance like Vita's family. Venison ribs, baby. They don't get better than this. So like I grew up very much so like indoctrinated into this idea that like it's important to like know where your food comes from. It's important to connect to the land. I think there's a different sort of connection you have when you become part of the, the I mean, part of the food chain, really, and part of the ecosystem. You stop thinking of yourself as a, as a visitor passing through nature, and you start to think of yourself more as a part of the whole thing. If you were started to draw, and I tell, it's I've always liked the outdoors, um, so I was trying to figure out another way to get me outdoors, and I came across Hunters of Color. Um, and I reached out to Brandon and he was very welcoming. We're basically here because we're trying to sort of bring people into this idea that hunting is for everyone and the outdoors are for everyone. Most people who hunt look like me. Um, they're white dudes who are sort of middle-aged. I didn't find my sort of people amongst uh, sort of the traditional hunters out there. You have a short drawing? Oh, okay. I do. And so I think it's a really amazing program because it is about being inclusive in the outdoors. I really look forward to honing my skills, experiencing my first harvests, and then transitioning into a mentorship role. It was something I always wanted to do and it just worked out. Um, the timing was perfect. Now I want to start hopefully bringing my kids. I would like for them to be outside more and this is a great way, you know, being outside in nature, whether it's fishing, hunting, 
whatever. Um, but this is a good start. I think we're meeting a human need of like being in community, like sort of putting people in access and proximity to something that they didn't normally see themselves represented in. Uh, so that way they can go back wherever they're from and to whatever communities they belong to and really sort of encourage people that like, you know, yeah, like I didn't think I was a hunter or could have been a hunter and now here I am. Read more about hunters of color on Newsday.com. Click get more below the Newsday TV video box. Feed Me is brought to you by PC Richard & Son. Our hunt for the best local pies continues. As Elisa DiStefano found out, not all pies are for dessert. Here's today's Feed Me TV. Both sweet and savory pies are sold at Kensington Pies in East Meadow. When I first came to the States, obviously I missed England uh, and I missed my English produce. So Antonio Trazzo decided to learn to make the pies himself. And I thought, huh, okay, um, there's a business here. Uh, and that's how it was formed. It was literally, I didn't want to buy them anymore, and people started requesting them. He makes authentic British chicken, steak, lamb, vegetarian, vegan, and a variety of fruit pies. Heavy. Uh, yeah, it's a pound. So what's, what's Ground in there? Ground sirloin of beef, Canadian bacon, celery, carrots and onion, and uh, an in-house made beef gravy. I'm the only one on the island that is a, a British manufacturer of British pies and pastries. Thank you, this is my first authentic British pie, is there a proper way to eat it? The only way is to dive in. Okay, that I could do. In the middle, Right in the in. middle? Yes. All right. And this is? Steak and mushroom. Steak and mushroom. Ooh, look at the mushroom in here. The greatest joy is converting an American <laughs> from a, an American pot pie to a British pie. It is so savory and so delicious. I think you might have a, a convert here. Elisa DiStefano, Newsday TV. Looks so good. For more on the best pies, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Get in the game with Newsday. The best team of sports reporters and columnists bring you in-depth analysis, behind-the-scenes stories, and news from inside the locker room. Get in the game when you subscribe to Newsday, your destination for total sports coverage at Newsday.com slash sports. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Macy Eglin. Thanks for joining us. Hope you have a great night. We'll leave you with a look at your seven-day forecast.